That's my first wireless controlled smart device, based on ESP32 chip. And truly saying, the amount of problems I've experienced making it is enormous. But eventually it works, somehow. Because I'm a professional. So here is the story. I'm planning to use the ESP32 chip, which has an inbuilt antenna and is pretty tiny compared to all those development boards. The aim is to control several addressable RGB LEDs from a phone with its help. How hard could it potentially be? So after drawing a relatively simple schematic of the whole device, making a PCB and receiving all the components needed from PCB way, I started soldering, using a secret soldering technique, which I'm gonna teach you absolutely for free. First, take the PCB you want to solder, then apply some solder paste through a stencil. When you are sure all parts are covered with solder paste, remove the stencil and start positioning components. Then generously pour alcohol over all components. Next step is very important, so don't mess it up. You have to find a lighter with a cute kitten on it. Any other won't work, I tried, trust me. I'm a professional. Then set the board on fire and wait. As you can see, solder paste is melting and everything goes as planned. In my opinion, results are more than acceptable, so feel free to use this method. Oh yeah, forgot to mention one small detail. There should be a hot plate beneath the PCB, heated to around 220 degrees. Without it, for some reason, the method doesn't work. Anyway, after assembling, the board is ready for programming. And here I must warn you, this part should be most informative and funny for you, but definitely not for me, considering the number of mistakes I made. Also small disclaimer, this is my first time working with ESP32, so before saying what an idiot I am in the comments, please like this video and then write it. So initially I wanted to program the chip through GTAG using ESP proc board to be able to debug it somehow. For those who don't know, ESP proc board just has an FTDI chip that converts USB to GTAG and UART. I was planning to use GTAG, so for that I made some pads on the chip accessible on the PCB, so I can simply solder some wires to them required for programming. After that, when the hardware part is ready, how do I actually program it? I came from the world where I used to compile projects and flash processors through official IDEs. For Texas Instruments it's Code Composer and for 8-bit AVR controllers it's Microchip Studio. So I assume Express if IDE is the correct way to program ESP32. I've never been so wrong in my life. So just to work with the IDE I had to install Git. Python 3 needed to build system tools, ESP IDF, after that was done, some software to update USB ports driver and open OCD, which stands for on-chip debugger. Then half a day was spent realizing that nothing actually works and I have no idea why. The biggest problem is that there are not so many guides on YouTube about Express If IDE. Apparently nobody uses it, so I had to change the strategy. I found some extremely nice guides regarding ESP32 programming and open OCD setup using Visual Studio Code, so I humbly followed instructions from the videos, doing a lot of boring stuff. And actually everything was going great. I built simple example project and it was time to flash it to the chip. But after one day of trying, the only thing I flashed was my dreams into the toilet. God damn it! It was supposed to be easy. Eventually I wasn't sure what was the problem, software or hardware. At this point both could be wrong. It could even be some snot between the pins of the chip, which I cannot even see, because pads are underneath it. When you are not sure what the problem is, software or hardware, at least one uncertainty has to be removed. So eventually I had to order a development kit with the same ESP32 H2 Mini to check whether it's a hardware problem or not. So eventually I was somehow able to flash a simple Blink program to the dev board, which is a start.
To access UART pins of the chip on my custom board, however, I had to do some modifications. Cut some traces, remove some components, because initially I was not planning to use UART and not all the pins were easily accessible. But luckily for me, somehow I managed to connect programming wires. And the moment of truth. Let's try flashing it. And... It doesn't work. So it must be a hardware problem. Eventually, after cutting more unnecessary traces, soldering some pull-up resistors, soldering one more board and resoldering chips again, I finally saw some signs of life. It's alive! It's alive! Easy! Told you, I'm a professional. Now when I can flash the chip, I can finally start working on its IoT functionality to control the LEDs from my phone. How am I going to do it? So there is such thing as Matter. Matter is an open-source, royalty-free smart home standard developed by the Connectivity Standards Alliance, formerly ZigBee Alliance. It ensures devices from different brands can seamlessly work together. So it defines a common application layer over Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Thread and Bluetooth to unify setup, control and security across IoT ecosystems like Apple HomeKit, Google Home or Amazon Alexa. Usually Matter devices have a special logo on them. So my initial plan was using it. And after all the fails with PCBs and software setup, my brain was looking for the simplest solution to finish this project. And actually, the simplest way of making your chip work with Matter is using zero code. I know, it's not very professional and not a very good way for embedded engineers. But for most common applications, it can be used to create Matter device in just 5 minutes. For example, smart lamps, switches, sensors, to control light bulbs, brightness and many other things. In my case, I'm using probably most common addressable LEDs together with ESP32H2 board, then just set up GPIO 8 and one LED. And that's it. So again, I started with the dev board just to be sure that it works. And everything went extremely smooth. I was able to flash chip quite fast. Now to control it, I have to scan the QR code with the Matter ID in Google Home. Add this device to my home and then control it. So let's scan it and wait and wait and wait. It's gonna work, I'm sure. Nothing can go wrong at this point. Right? And it didn't work. You know why? Because this ESP32H2 Mini 1 doesn't have Wi-Fi, only ZigBee, Thread and Bluetooth available, and it can only work with some hub, for example with Google Nest Hub. But I only have Google Home Mini, which doesn't have such functionality. It's not a hub. So I had to buy some device with hub functionality. Cheapest option was Apple HomePod Mini, which I bought on eBay for around 80 euros. After connecting it to the Home app, it should work as a hub, connecting buttons I press on my phone to that LED. I am really scared to try it, because if it won't work, I'm gonna explode. It works! Told you, I'm professional. Nothing to worry about. So now I can change its brightness, turn it on and off, change color, and set up many other features. But let's come back to our poor board and try to flash it through zero code. I'm just gonna press the connect button and not gonna look. Does it work? Something definitely is not right. Development board connected in just a second, and this one doesn't connect at all. But all wires are definitely connected correctly, I checked it in Visual Studio Code. I even flashed some code to it. Hmm, okay, I have an idea. I can actually download binaries from the website and flash them manually into the chip. So I just copied addresses in flash where zero code flashes data and then did the same with the binaries one by one. Some abracadabra to see what's going on on COM port and what the chip sends, and it doesn't work. But at least we can see why. Apparently, the problem is with the size of flash. My ESP32H2 only has 2 megabytes flash, but the firmware binaries header says it requires 4 megabytes. 
so the bootloader refuses to run it. Again, I'm not an embedded engineer, but that seems to be the problem. So I can think of two possible solutions. First one is to adjust that header file, saying I have only 2 megabytes. Through zero code I have no access to that, I just have binaries. I can also try finding a GitHub project for this exact chip which do the same and hope it works. Or I can just do the most obvious thing. Just solder a chip with more flesh to my board. Brute force. And brute force is good, it's what engineers love. Actually it's quite funny that a chip with 4 megabytes flash costs less than the 2 megabytes one, but somehow I still managed to buy the option with less memory. What a comedy. But eventually everything works, both by flashing through web or Visual Studio code. I can control it through my phone, change brightness, all inclusive I would say. The only thing it misses is the case. All parts for which I ordered from PCBWay company. They have different plastic options which fit all tasks needed, starting from simple PLA, ending with titanium, steel and aluminum 3D printing. In my case I used white resin plus resin painted in orange and made diffuse resin, which look very nice together. In case 3D printing does not impress you, PCBWay also provides laser cutting, metal bending, vacuum casting and CNC machining services, which I personally used in a lot of previous videos and can assure high quality. So if you're interested, go and check PCBWay services by yourself, reference link is in the description. Must say I miscalculated functionality of this lamp a bit. I thought it would be fun to have a battery to power it, as well as a button to control it. But objectively, if it's controlled from a phone, is a button actually necessary or redundant? Same with the battery. If such a lamp or LED strip plays somewhere on a shelf and is always plugged in, what's the actual purpose of a battery? I don't know, what's your thoughts on it? How would you do it? Write it in the comments. By the way, this video is not a guide, rather anti-guide. Don't repeat my mistakes. And don't forget to subscribe, like this video and check my other ones, they are quite nice. Love you, bye.